Now that, my friends, is what you call a collection. Holy shite. Yes, my friends, welcome to another Funky G collection video. Today is the Xbox 360 collection. Who would have thunk that I would have such a big Xbox 360 collection? But let's go ahead and explain myself a little bit real quick. Oops, sorry if I put my thumb in front of the camera. Or not thumb, but... Um, after the GameCube era, meaning the, the uh, era after that, I... Uh, well, I should say during. Near the end of the GameCube era, which is PS2 and Xbox era as well. Original PS2, or original Xbox. Um... I got an Xbox, a regular Xbox, and I really, really, really fell in love with Halo 1, 2, and it, it's, it just super made me want to buy Halo 3, and therefore I bought an Xbox 360, and I started off with games such as Halo 3, and, as you can imagine, it pretty much grew from there. I just accumulated games over time, and here we are, you know, 10 years later, and wow... Don't worry, I didn't buy all these games full price. I'll uh, I'll explain myself as I go. And yes, you also see stickers of games I haven't even opened. But those, I shall explain as we get to them. So, obviously, there's some uh, Xbox controller, 360 controllers just to, for aesthetic purposes. But let's get cracking on going through the collection. This one might be a long video again, guys. As you can see, we have a long way to go. Don't worry, I'll try not to spend too much time on any one game. So let's get this shit started. Let's get it started. Okay, get the controllers out of the way. And actually, I got one surprise for you to kick it off of another game I haven't opened. It's not even in this picture. Starting it off with the Mass Effect Trilogy. As you can see, not opened. Um, the reason why it's not opened is because I've actually played... Sorry. Uh, I've actually played Mass Effect 1 and 2 already. And 3, I have not played. The only reason I haven't played it yet is because I just haven't got around to it. Um, I played 1 and 2 from a friend. I borrowed it from a friend, and I never owned them. So I was like... Eh, screw it. If I'm going to buy them, I might as well buy the whole trilogy so I have them. So I have the trilogy, Mass Effect 3. Uh, I'll play it someday. I have to. Um, might help if I actually hooked up my Xbox 360. I haven't hooked it up in a while. Anyway, so I just want to kick it off with that. And actually, one other game I haven't opened since I've been collecting. And you guys are probably going to be like, what? Yeah. You see it. It's there on your screen. Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Everyone knows what Skyrim is. And Funky G has not played it. And I bought the Legendary Edition. I actually bought it, like, last year. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've just never played it. I've played uh, Oblivion, and it was okay. That's partially why I didn't care to play Skyrim. But I'll get around to it. It's yet another game where I'm just like, eh. I'll get bored one day and be like, yo, let's try it. It's kind of the same with Mass Effect 3, although I'd rather play Mass Effect 3 first, so that's more likely to happen before this one. But anyway, those are two unopened games I have. I just wanted to show those off. Um... Those are more recently bought. I didn't buy those ones a long ago like a lot of the rest of these. So let's get to the rest of this collection, shall we? I know it's a little uneven now, but let's just go through one side at a time. All right, let's kick it off with games that I got when I first bought the 360. So when I bought the 360, it came with Project Gotham Racing 3, if you can see the 3 on there. Um, I never really played this game much. It looks like a fun racing game, but I'm not a big racing fan. It came with the Xbox. That's the only reason I have it. And I tend to hold on to everything I ever get. So I'm a pack rat of sorts when it comes to games. I really am. All right, next game on the list also came with the Xbox 360. Madden 08. As you can see, unopened. That'll fetch some money, right? I could sell it for lots of dollars, right? No? Okay, well, I've never really been a big Madden fan. Um, the, only, uh, the only NFL football game I've ever... Re um, video game I've ever liked to play was NFL Blitz. <sighs> I miss NFL Blitz, but anyway... There's Madden 08. Let's not waste time on that shit. Another game I got when I got my Xbox 360. SmackDown vs. Raw 2008. Um, I played it a little bit. Got kind of bored. It's more fun with friends. It's not really fun by yourself. Um, it's a decent wrestling game. I never really got into the new gen of wrestling. This is kind of in the era when I had kind of stopped watching wrestling. I'm kind of more back into watching wrestling nowadays. But when this came out, I wasn't really watching. Moving on. Another one I bought right after I got my Xbox 360, Cameo Elements of Power, an Xbox 360 exclusive. Uh, was this made by Rare? Hold on. Let's check. Um, let me just look on my own. I can't see through the camera very clearly. Was this made by Rare? Um, um, doesn't really say. At least not that I can tell. 
Well, whatever. I don't see that it was made by Rare. It just says Microsoft Game Studios. It might have been made by some of the guys from Rare. Because that's after Rare was acquired by Xbox or by Microsoft. Um, but anyway, Elements Power. It's a very short, kind of a platformy adventure type of game. It's okay. It gets kind of repetitive and boring, but... For, you know, for, I think this was on a release day Xbox 360 game, and I went ahead and just bought it because it was super cheap. And it's fun. I had my fun with it, but it's nothing special. Nothing special. I'm going to need to make some space over here on my extra table. I got lots of games to go through. Next one is a grayed out title because it's a Platinum Hits title. I bought this one, obviously, way after it came out. Sonic Genesis Ultimate Genesis Collection. It's actually the best Genesis Collection of games I've ever seen. That's why I went ahead and bought it. It's got all the Sonics. It's got... All the good stuff. Golden Axe, Streets of Rage. Uh, fuck, I don't even remember everything that's on here. So many good things. Kid Chameleon. I see Altered Beast on there. Golden Axe. Did I say Golden Axe already? I might have. Anyway, it's got all the good shit. Basically, one of the best uh, assembled Sonic uh, Sega Genesis collections ever. And uh, I actually played the crap out of this. And there's a few games on here I still want to go back to. It even has the Fantasy Star games, which... Come on now. Come on. All right, moving on. Next thing, we got another Sonic game, Sonic Generations. The first Sonic game that I actually did, felt like buying pretty much since... What's the last Sonic game I bought before this? Sonic 2 Adventure Battle on GameCube? I think so. Pretty sure every Sonic before that, I just said, fuck it, I'm not buying that. So I didn't buy, you know, Sonic uh, Heroes. I never bought Sonic 06, as they call it. I never bought the Black Sonic and the Black Knight, Sonic... Unleashed Sonic Color. Well, actually, I did buy Sonic Colors, but that was later. I actually bought Sonic Colors after I bought this, but well, that's another video. That's a different console. Anyway, Sonic Generations. Bought it. It's actually a pretty good game. I enjoyed myself a lot, and I'm a big nostalgia. I have a lot of nostalgia for original Sonic from Genesis days, so it, it, it hit that. It hit that. It hit that real good. All right, so the next one you see is the only black case in the whole stack. Now, why is that? Well, that's because... Remember how I mentioned how I used to have an Xbox, original Xbox? Well, I kind of got rid of that, and I got rid of most of the games I had for it with it. I went, you know, I gave it away, but I kept three games. Three games. This was not one of those three games. I actually bought this game later. But the reason why I want to put my Xbox, original Xbox games in this is because they kind of go with the collection. But this one is a little bit of an outlier because Black Case, and I got it later, and I actually bought it last couple years. But it's an Xbox exclusive, only on Panzer Dragoon Orta. Now, the reason why I bought this is if you watch them, if you watch my channel a lot, you know a couple years ago I did Shmup Timber for shoot 'em up games, and this is one of the games I played. So, yeah, I only bought it strictly for that. Played through the whole game on easy mode. It's kind of a hard game to get good at, but it's fun. I, I really like flying on the back of a dragon. It's kind of the most awesome thing about it. So. I don't know. That's why I bought it. It wasn't that expensive, even though I only bought it two years ago. Anyway, moving on. More games I bought for the purpose of Shmup Timber. I'm glad I prefaced that, because this is another one of those. Otomedius Excellent. Yeah, stare at that anime girl's ass and her cleavage. Mm-hmm. Wow. All I can say is, if you want to know more about this game, go watch my Shmup Timber episode. It was just one episode, but man, it was a worthy episode. That opening with the anime girls, who oh boy. Change your life. All right. The other one I bought for Shmup Timber, Death Smiles, a game created by Axis. No, Axis is the publisher. Who the hell made this again? Is it Treasure? Cave. Cave. They are, if you can see, I don't know if it's going to clear up that, that right, this, this logo right there is Cave. It's not going to, it's not going to, oh, there it goes. Oh, I'm almost focused. Whatever. Cave. It's a shooter made by the publisher, or the, uh, whatever, creator developer cave and it's uh, one of those really really big name shmup creators um yeah it's pretty good i actually like this one a lot the music in it is kick ass very hard though as all shmups are bought it for shmup timber did a video on it check it out okay so now we're finally going to get to some more of the stuff that you probably would rather see getting some of the easy stuff out of, or the shitty stuff out of the way or at least less well known and not as good okay you kind of see creeping into the into the view here the orange box oh shit as you can see, I bought the gray Platinum Hits version. Uh, it never really appealed to me when I first heard about it because I didn't know anything about Half-Life at all. Uh, the reason why I actually bought this is because it had Portal on it. And then I was like, hey, it has Portal and other games and it's a less than $20. So I was like, fuck yeah, I'm going to buy it. So I bought it, played the shit out of Portal, which I really love. Portal's awesome. Um, but then, 
you know, I played Half Life on here, and it's actually or Half Life Two. It's actually Half Life Two, Half Life Episode One, and Ep- and Half Life Episode Two. It's all three of those games are in here. Um, those were all really fun. I actually very much enjoyed myself. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they're good. I, I can see why Half Life is loved. It's just pretty pretty damn cool. Um, Team Fortress Two, I've only played a little bit. Uh, to be perfectly honest, now that I play Overwatch, Team Fortress Two kind of seems obsolete. Just saying, just saying. All right, here we go. Time to get some of the bigger name series here. We haven't even gotten to it yet. Here we go, baby. Everyone's favorite, Call of Duty. This is the first Call of Duty I ever bought, and my God, I did not go wrong. Call of Duty 4 was amazing when I first played it. Oh my God. There was nothing that like that crazy good at being that style. It was just so so good and so fun multiplayer. I did not expect the multiplayer to be that fun, but man, I had a lot of fun with this. And I'm, I, you know, going back in time, I'm glad I got it. And because I loved playing that so much, of course, I bought Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Yes, I skipped over Call of Duty 5. What was it? World at War? I skipped that one because I didn't really care for the style or the setting. I waited for this. And also not disappointing, I played this actually way more than I played Call of Duty 4. This is probably the Call of Duty I've played the most. And yes, it's because of the multiplayer. I know I'm not... I'm not big on talking about Call of Duty because I'm not a big Call of Duty whore anymore, but for a minute there I was, and wow, I played the lot. I played this a lot. And because I love that one a lot, I skipped over Call of Duty Ghosts, and I bought Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, which ended up just being Call of Duty 2, or Modern Warfare 2.1. It really was like the same fucking game, just continuing the story, or finishing the story. Anyway, still a good game, but pretty much got sick of it playing, I got sick of playing Call of Duty on this one. And this is where I stopped. I never bought another Call of Duty. Oh, wait. I take that back. In between... It wasn't Ghost. Ghost came out after this. Modern Warfare 2 in between was Black Ops. I did play Black Ops. I never bought it, though. I got kind of sick of Black Ops, so I waited for this game instead. And then I got sick of that game. So, yeah, there you go. Call of Duty. We talked about it. Now we can move on with our lives. All right, we got another silver game, which means another Platinum Hits, baby. Well, actually, this isn't Platinum Hits. It's just silver because it's Fallout 3 Game of the Year Edition. Yeah, it actually has a slipcover over here. I, I took all my slipcovers off to not spoil any of the games here, but yeah, there's a slipcover. Um, whoop de doo I know. Um, okay, so Fallout 3, I've actually played the whole game, did everything, did all the DLC. Pretty cool game. I was pretty impressed by the fact that it was like a big open-world first-person shooter, and you know what? I was not disappointed. I had a good time. Um, would I go back to it? Probably not. It, it's a very time-consuming and long game, but I enjoyed myself, so yeah. Now, that brings me to another thing, which is actually a game that's here. Actually, it is opened. I just haven't played it yet. Fallout New Vegas Ultimate Edition, which is basically the Game of the Year Edition. Um, I bought this. Oh, it's Platinum Hits. It's just not a Platinum case. Okay, I just realized. Anyway, I bought it way later. Uh, I've actually not played this. This is one of the four games on Xbox 360 that I have that I haven't played at all. Well, that are beatable games. I'm not talking about Madden. We ain't gonna talk about Madden. Um, But yeah, Fall New Vegas, another game I really, really need to play. Um, especially if I'm ever going to play Fallout 4, which I do want to play. So, anyway, keep going with the first-person shooter open-world style. Borderlands, holy shit. You know, when Borderlands came out, I didn't know shit about it, right? But then, I... Did I borrow from somebody? I don't know. I can't remember why I decided to buy this. But whatever reason I decided to buy it was a fantastic idea because, whoa, did I fucking fall in love with this game. And I, yeah, dude, it was so worth it. The Game of the Year edition, super worth it. I think I borrowed it from a friend to try it out. I think that's what I did. But, man, it was super worth it. I love this game. Way, way too much fun. Freaking co-op four-player is so amazing. I just, I can't, I can't say enough good things about this kind of game. Now, it does get repetitive, I agree. But just... The style of it is what I love, I think, the most. And just the fact that there's so many guns, and they're all cool guns and different styles of guns, and ugh, I just love this game. So, of course, naturally, I did I did want to buy Borderlands 2, which I never did buy on Xbox 360. I did end up buying it on PC, though, so there you go. Just, just if you were expecting Borderlands 2 to come up next, it's not. We're going to move on to another exclusive. Well, no, it's not exclusive, that's right. Anyway, another Xbox 360 Gen exclusive. We'll call it that generation. Assassin's Creed, because it's a new. It was a new series for that generation. That's kind of what I meant. 
Assassin's Creed. Whoo boy. Another game that I immediately fell in love with when I first saw the footage about it. I was like, holy crap, that looks amazing. It definitely made me want to buy an Xbox 360. Like when Halo 3 came out, I was like, man, I got to get one of those. And then there, I was looking at other games. I'm like, dude, this game looks awesome too. So this was one of the first games I bought after I got the 360. You know, after I got the games that came bundled with it and all that. Not disappointed at all, and it got me super hyped, because this series was fucking awesome. Or at least that game was fucking awesome. So I went and bought Assassin's Creed 2 day one. And man, I loved it even more. Assassin's Creed 2 was amazing. Like, it was one of my favorite games. Like, at the time, I was just like, man, it's so good. So good. And I love the setting in the second one, where you're all up in, in Italy and stuff. It's fantastic. Fantastic. I freaking love it. So, of course, naturally, I kept buying them Assassin's Creed games as they come out. Brotherhood was next, which was a direct sequel to Assassin's Creed 2. It still stars Ezio Auditore, and it's a it's a good game, too. It it's, it's kind of builds on the second one, so there's not really a whole lot of new stuff going on other than, like... I mean, there's new stuff, but, I mean, the story doesn't change. You still have the same setting. You're just kind of in a different area of Europe. So, of course, I like Brotherhood enough to go ahead and finish off the Ezio story and buy... Assassin's Creed Revelations. So yes, I have all three of the Ezio Auditore, tri Aud Auditore trilogy. And uh, yeah, it, this one is kind of where I started questioning whether or not I should keep buying Assassin's Creed games. Because it's not a bad game. It's just, you know, it was still more of the same. Not enough new shit. And the setting was still kind of the same. He was just getting older. So, of course, when they announced an Assassin's Creed 3, I got my hype back. Because the setting was Civil War, or no, was Revolutionary War America, sorry. Brits versus the uh, colonists. And, of course, with Native Americans mixed in. And that's kind of what this game is about. And I really, really like the setting of this game. But playing the game made me realize that I just, that, that they weren't going to do anything so di different or interesting about the game anymore. That would keep me wanting to play. And I got really bored playing this one, actually. So yeah, so this is where I've stopped. I have yet to play another Assassin's Creed game since this one. I have since bought two of them on the PS4, but I have still yet to play another one. This is the last one I played. And uh, I gotta say I was massively disappointed in a very sad way. Because I loved, I loved all the trailers for this game. And I was very disappointed. Alright, let's get into some games I love, baby. Here we go. Game of the Year edition of Batman Arkham City. Now, you might be wondering, why don't you have Arkham Asylum? Well, I never did buy Arkham Asylum. I did play it, though, and I played the whole game, and I loved it, and that's why I wanted to buy Arkham City. But I bought it way late. I was a little behind. Obviously, I got the Game of the Year edition. But look at that. 10 out of 10. Anyway, this basically took Assassin's... Assassin's... Arkham Asylum and fucking destroyed it thousandfold by letting you go around a whole city... And, oh, God, it's so good, guys. It's so good, especially if you're a Batman fan. If you are a Batman fan, it is amazing. I love this game a lot. I mean, just look at all the freaking accolades it has right on there on the cover. Freaking loved it. Anyway, so, because I fell in love with this game, I'm a big Batman fan, obviously. Naturally, of course, I wanted to play the next one, which is Arkham Origins. Now, there's nothing really wrong with this game... Per se, I would say the only thing I don't like is that it's short. It's too short. Like, you could do everything to beat the game way too fast and not have any other requirements to, like... You could still do a bunch of side shit anyways, but it's like, none of it matters. You already beat the game, so you're kind of like, eh, who cares? So it's like, like it's just because the gameplay is just as good, and you're in, like, the similar area. You're in a different area, of course, but it's similar. And anyways, needless to say, regardless of this game's shortcomings compared to Arkham City... I still wanted to play Arkham Knight, and I've yet to play Arkham Knight, actually. I bought Arkham Knight on PS4. It's another one of those PS4 games I have yet to get to, but it's on my list of things to do. Okay, so as you can see, we've gotten through one half. we still got a long way to go, guys. we still got a long way to go, so let's get to the top of this and get to the bottom. Here we go. More Xbox exclusives. Gears of War. Oh, boy. Another series that... Sold me on buying the Xbox 360. This game was fucking cool as shit when I first saw it. And then playing it only solidified my original thoughts. So, of course, you already know where this is going, I'm imagining. 
because I had so much fun playing that one, and the co-op campaign was amazing as well, of course, I bought Gears of War 2. And, you know, it only builds from there. Gears of War 2 was also amazing, but they still... Nothing compared, because Gears of War 3, my friends, now this is where it was at. Gears of War 3, I was absolutely obsessed with. Actually, Gears of War 2, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Gears of War 2, I was probably more obsessed with, but that's because I was waiting for Gears of War 3. Because Gears of War 3 has the Horde mode, at least a revamped Horde mode, and revamped Horde mode is amazing! Amazing. Can I just say that again? Amazing. Gears of War 3, dude. I, <sighs> Gears of War 3 is where it's at, man. Just so good. So good. Being able to build all the traps. Oh, man. The, the horde mode, man. I spent more hours on horde mode in this game than I ever did playing the multiplayer, like, versus, you know, death matches and stuff. The freaking horde mode is the best horde mode I've ever played because it's built to have a horde mode where it's just not like, oh, yeah, there's a horde mode also. We can just kill waves of enemies. No, 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 no. It's more than that. It's built around it, and it's so good. It's so good. I loved it. Anyway, I Gears of War myself out, so I did, I, after that I didn't want to play any more Gears of War. Especially when Gears of War Judgment looked like garbage, so I said fuck that game and I didn't buy it. So I never played Gears of War Judgment. Sue me. Alright, back to the top of the stack. Here we go. Another amazing game. Here we go. Bioshock. Now this is another one, along with Assassin's Creed, that sold me on buying an Xbox. And not disappointed. This is in my, I would say, top 30 games of all time. It's pretty amazing. Very creepy, atmosphere, underwater world, and it's just so good. So good. I love it. I love it. it I, I don't even want to go into it too much. It's just the story is so good, the setting is so good, and it's actually creepy as hell. I'm, not, I'm usually not a fan of creepy games, but this one, I didn't care. It was so good. So very good. So, of course, I bought Bioshock 2, which, compared to the first one, very disappointing. I did play the multiplayer, though, and multiplayer is actually pretty fun. Um, I was actually pretty surprised by how fun the multiplayer was, the versus multiplayer. Um, but yeah, the story in this game is just not, it's almost like a rehash of the first game, or just, it kind of adds more detail to the first game. There's a new twist that happens, blah, 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 but it really wasn't that, that good compared to the first one. The first one was just such, it's got the similar atmosphere and all that, it's just not, it's not, it doesn't have the same, the same greatness, I think. It just felt more epic in the first game. So, but anyways, moving on. Bioshock Infinite, you knew where I was coming with this. I actually played this game on my channel, blindly, and so if you want to know my full enjoyment or, you know, thoughts on it, you can watch the Let's Play or at least watch the end of it. But anyways, uh, I really did enjoy the game. It's pretty awesome. The setting is probably my favorite. I know I liked Bioshock 1 the best still. I still like Bioshock 1 better than this game. But the setting of Bioshock Infinite is my favorite because it's a city in the sky. Like, what else do you need to know? City in the sky is so... F Whew. City, uh, having a city in the sky is kind of one of those things it's just like it seems realistic like you could do it one day but to actually see a realistic city that's actually up there like in a realistic setting like this is it's uh, it's like dream come true almost like oh man I hope that happens someday it's just cool and the setting's actually like older it seems like the, the uh, technology on that is older than our technology today in fact it is so it's like weird to see like old technology in in a sky world setting which is amazing to me style is so good all right you guys ready for this it's about to get real remember how i said we were uh, i have my original xbox games in this stack as well or at least a few that i have left well here we go starting with halo combat evolved i know it says game of the year edition in fact this well it's not really an edition it just has a sticker of game of the year well this is the reason why i bought original xbox i bought it I had already played Halo a bunch at a friend's house, but uh, Halo 2 was impending, and I really wanted to have my own Xbox, so I bought it, and I bought this game. Um, that's why I have, like, this Halo Game of the Year sticker on it. So, yeah, that's all I can say, really. Halo Combat Evolved, one of my favorite games of all time. Yes, I said that. Top 20. The campaign is so good. The handgun, bam. Handgun. Wait, wait. Bam. Sorry, I did that so fast you couldn't even see it. The handgun, though. Anybody who's played Halo Combat Evolved knows. And one thing I haven't bought, which I do want to buy still someday, is the Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary Edition. It was the 10-year Anniversary Edition. It came out on Xbox 360. I never did buy it. I still could. It's not. A re it's actually pretty reasonably priced these days. I just haven't. Still one day I might. Still one day I might. But, of course, 
the other Xbox original game I have here, or right on top, or right on the bottom, whatever. Halo 2, the game I basically bought the Xbox 360 for, or the original Xbox for, because it wasn't out yet, and I was waiting for it, and I played original Halo, waiting for this game, and obviously not disappointing at all. Halo 2, redefined multiplayer, uh, first-person shooting, to the point where it was like, okay, this is where it's at. And first-person shooter games got super popular during this time period again, like as a for, as a multiplayer online enabled, as you see. That's where it started to really take off. I mean, sure, it existed, but this is where this is the era that it really, really took off. And it's a big part of that is because of Halo Two and the fact that Xbox can connect to online, and that really set off the the first-person shooter online thing. Man, it was crazy. Anyways. On to the reason I bought the Xbox 360. I already mentioned it a couple times. Here's my OG copy of Halo 3, baby. Oh, yeah. Fucking love Halo 3. I spent more hours on this than probably majority of the games I've shown you so far. Um, mostly on multiplayer. I had a, at least... I think I had at most... Our biggest team that we had at once was six people. I don't think we ever got to the full eight before. We got pretty close, though. Six or seven. I don't know. Like, all of us playing at once online or you know multiple people playing sitting in the same room plus people playing online because you could do that split screen co-op or i should say split screen online combined with basically you could go online and you could have your uh guests and you can have up to four people or up to three people being guests four people on the same console split screen also with other people on the another team you know on another xbox so yeah halo 3 dude <sighs> i can't say enough about it some of the better days of my life playing that with friends. Co-op campaign was amazing as well. Four-player co-op campaign, amazing. So anyways, because the Halo craze was going on, of course, they tried to capitalize on it. With Halo 3, ODST. Also, I you know, I don't talk I don't think about this game too often, but to be perfectly honest, I really really enjoyed this game, especially with the same friends I was playing Halo 3 with. We were all pretty hooked on this stuff, and Halo 3 ODST was actually really really fun. It was cool to not play as the Spartan, so you weren't quite as overpowered feeling as you were in the first three games. You were playing as Master Chief. You are playing as the human guys. So it kind of made you feel a little more... Care you, had to be, like, you had to be a little more careful. But overall, it just felt like another Halo game, mostly. So, I mean, it's still really fun to play. The gameplay is just as good. And they try to be a little more story-heavy here with telling stories from different perspectives and different soldiers and stuff. So, I mean, that was kind of cool, too. But, I mean... It wasn't quite as good as Halo 3, but it was still a good game in its own right, I have to say. Moving on. Yes, the Halo is not done yet. Halo Wars. Now, this one was very near and dear to... Like, this one pulled at my nostalgia strings super hard. And why? Well, I was super on the Halo craze at the time. And I was a super big fan of Age of Empires 2. Oh my god, Age of Empires. And anybody who knows anything about Age of Empires knows Ensemble Studios. And you should know that an RTS of Halo is a great idea. It really is. In fact, I've just recently heard that they announced Halo Wars 2 for Xbox One. And I'm kind of sad about that because I'm like, damn it, I'm not going to buy an Xbox One to play that. I mean, there's also Halo 5, but honestly, I don't give a shit about Halo 5. Um, but yeah, Halo Wars, pretty fun game, very different for, it's obviously not a very Halo-y game other than the setting, it's an RTS game, but it is fun, it's a pretty good RTS game, even for console, it's pretty good, pretty good, I was impressed. And then, of course, came Death, well, actually, this is skipping a Halo game, I just realized, because I don't have it, Halo Reach actually came after that, and I don't actually don't, I never owned Halo Reach, I, I played it from a friend, and I, or didn't, I did not care for it, I, I tried to play online multiplayer. Oh, oops, sorry. I tried to play online multiplayer, and I just, I just couldn't get into it. I did not like the Spartan powers at all. But regardless of that, I gave Halo Four a shot. I gave it a shot. I gave it its chance. I gave it its time in the sun. And you know what? Fuck three four three studios. They can go suck a dick. Halo F Halo is over as far as I'm concerned. I know the gameplay is still okay. But all the new shit they added in this game just sucks. The new guns from the new race of aliens suck. The boss fight, if you could call it that at the end of the game, sucks. All the campaign missions kind of suck. Nothing about this game stood out to me. I didn't even play online multiplayer for more than like 10 minutes. I was like, no, I'm done. Nope. 
No, I beat the story, and Halo 4 went on the shelf forever, and it probably will stay that way. I'm more likely to go back and play Halo 1 and 2 before I ever play Halo 4 again. Fuck you, Halo 4. Fuck you. Okay, one last original Xbox game, and as you can see, it is a platinum hit. It's Fable The Lost Chapters. And you're like, what? Why do you have the platinum one? Well, I used to have the original copy of Fable from Xbox. I, I did, but when I gave my Xbox to my friend, I gave him Fable, but I kept this one because I bought this later. I love Fable so goddamn much, I bought it again with the Lost Chapters. Uh, I don't want to call it a DLC, but you know, it had extra expansion stuff. This is basically Lost Chapters was an expansion pack that was only on PC originally, I think. Anyway, they released it on Xbox, re-release. And I was like, dude, I want extra shit. So I bought it, and then I, uh, when I finally gave away my Xbox original, I, I kept this one. And you know what? Fable Lost Chapters, pretty goddamn awesome. I love Fable so much. Like, we're about to get into Fable right now, and we're about to actually get to one that I haven't opened, which is weird, right? Speaking of original Fable, here it is. Fable. Original. But it's the anniversary edition and that they re-released on Xbox 360, the 10-year anniversary. Haven't even opened it, guys. That's how be far behind I am in my backlog. I just haven't... I don't know. I, can't, I haven't justified the time to replay this game yet. As much as I want to, and I will eventually, Fable Anniversary... I, I gotta get back to you, man. I got to. I got to. Because I really love Fable, and this will only prove it right here. Because Fable motherfucking 2. Whoo, boy. Fable 2. In my top 25 of all time, I would say. I, I can't remember my list off, offhand. I always talk about my top whatever. I actually do have a top whatever list, and I should make a video of it. But Fable 2's in there, man. It's in there. I spent so many hours on Fable 2. I did... I have a platinum... No, sorry, that's a, that's, P that's a PS PlayStation thing. I have a complete on this game, which means you got all the achievements, including all the DLC achievements. So, if you don't know how much that entails, you can go look it up, but that's a lot of work and a lot of hours spent to max out all of the achievements of Fable 2. And I, I, just, I just love it. I love the, the good and bad aspects, you know, being a good guy or a bad guy and killing everyone or saving everyone it's just such a good good idea when it when i first played fable i loved it and fable 2 only built upon that and made it even better so of course we're getting there that led to fable 3 or fable 2.5 as i like to call it because it came out way too soon it's literally it's fable 2.5 that's exactly what it is it's the, the, everything about it feels the same other than the like new mechanic of the, the money thing, like everything is built on how much money you're making because you have to pay off the debt or the crown or some uh, some weird shit like that. Anyway, I just didn't like it as much as Fable 2. It's still fun because it's Fable, but I didn't. I was less inclined to do everything in the game because I just didn't enjoy it as much. So there's Fable 3. It's there. It's part of my collection. I beat the crap out of it. I just didn't do all the achievements on it like I did the last one. Okay, so as you can tell, we're getting to the RPGs finally, and you can probably tell based on my, my uh, preferences that I was going to save the RPGs for last, right? Okay, let me get back into this. Sorry, I got a little cut off there. My, apparently there's a maximum video size for my phone. Didn't realize. I have plenty of space. I just didn't know the video files were uh, limited. Anyway, I, was good. I just got to it. I cut, got cut off there. Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning. I remember playing the demo to this game and thinking, man, this is a pretty sweet cross between like fable and what was the other thing i called it dragon age yeah that's what i think good cross between fable and dragon age and it really is it's a giant open world style rpg game the combat feels like fable which fables combat is the best thing about it really and it's just it's epic as fuck and it's sad that the company that made this shit went under so fast because this game was actually really good it's just really, really long, and I got kind of bored by the end because it's just so goddamn long, and I'm a completionist kind of guy who wanted to do everything, but the game itself, really fun, kind of sad that the company that made it went under, but what are you going to do? What are you going to do? All right, speaking of Dragon Age, which I just brought up, here it is, Dragon Age Origins, the Ultimate Edition. Now, Dragon Age Origins, I actually bought, or didn't buy, um, I borrowed it from a friend when it first came out, and I played it, and I loved it a lot, so I was like, screw that. I will buy it for myself. So I did. And I bought this version because it had all the DLC and the extra, as you can see, the extra Awakening DLC and stuff. 
which basically added a whole bunch of new shit to the game, which is pretty cool. I really, really liked the story of Dragon Age. It was one of my favorite Xbox 360 games that I had played that wasn't just a flat-out JRPG or a first-person shooter. It was, like, different, and I really liked it. Really liked it. Western RPG, as you call that. So because I really like Dragon Age Origins, I played Dragon Age 2. This one got really boring. The world was so boring in the game compared to Dragon Age 1. All the areas were basically re... They basically reused the same cave about 20 times. I Like, every cave you find in the game was basically the same cave, but, like, kind of in, like, a different order almost, but it, all of it was the same. It was re It's really hard to describe, but... Needless to say, the story in this game is not as good as the first one. I cared a lot less about the characters. Just uh, the gameplay, while well, they tried to add a little bit more action to it by having you have to press more buttons while you're fighting instead of letting it be automatically your characters are hitting the enemies. It just, you had to mash the button more, and I felt like that was more tedious than actually just letting your characters do their thing. I find that better in Dragon Age. So, Dragon Age 2, not a bad game. It's just nowhere near as good as the original. And yes, I do have Dragon Age... Inquisition for PS4, um, which is a great game as well. Better than that than two for sure. Um, but obviously that's not here on 360. Okay, let's keep going with the RPG thing. Actually, the rest of these I believe are RPGs. Final Fantasy Motherfucking 13 in the main series of Final Fantasy. Here it is. First Final Fantasy on Xbox. There it is. Actually, was Final Fantasy 12 on Xbox? Actually, I think Final Fantasy 12. Might have also been on Xbox. In fact, I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, that's the... Or no, it's not 12, sorry. 11, the online-only one. Final Fantasy 11 was on Xbox. It was later, because it was the online game. But 13, yes. Um, because I didn't have the PS3 at the time, I my, my console of choice was 360 at the time. I bought it on there, on here, whatever. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's okay. I mean, on the spectrum of the Final Fantasy series, it's pretty low on my list. But as RPG goes, I mean, RPGs go, it's not a bad RPG game by any stretch of the imagination. It's just, it's one of the better this gen or, you know, of this, this gen, the 360 generation RPGs. It's just not, I don't think it's that great. I was actually kind of disappointed when I first played it. It just wasn't, it wasn't what I wanted. I even like 12 better than this because 12 has so much more to it than this one does. I don't know, man. As as badass as Lightning is, she couldn't save this game from itself, really. Too much hype, just not good enough. It just wasn't good enough, that's all I can say. Well, because it's Final Fantasy, though, you know I'm a sucker for Final Fantasy. Of course I bought Final Fantasy XIII, too, which stars freaking Lightning's sister, which she actually Lightning's on the cover anyways, even though it stars her sister, Sarah. Um... This game was actually very disappointing. I thought this was going to be cool. I thought they were going to fix everything that's wrong with Final Fantasy XIII and do it better. But you know what? They failed at that miserably. And we got this mess of a story, which is so non-linear. And who cares? Like, I don't care if it's linear or non-linear. This one is just so so much of a mess and out of order that you're kind of like... You just don't care about the story. And that's not what Final Fantasy is about. You can't just not care about the story. I mean, you can... Duh, but I mean, if the story is so, doesn't, doesn't drive any of the game at all, you're just kind of like, fuck this game. And that's how this one feels to me. I just got so bored with it. I almost didn't even beat it because I was so bored, but I went back and finished it. But speaking of games I haven't finished, yes, we're getting into more Final Fantasy. Lightning Returns, which is basically Final Fantasy XIII 3. It's not called that, but it basically is that. Come, It's the fucking end of the trilogy of Lightning, and uh, this one actually... The gameplay is really fun. I liked it a lot better than 13-2. I like the, the new gameplay. It's solo, though. Lightning fights by herself the whole time, and which is fine. It's different. And uh, I liked it. I just I, It was it ended up being kind of hard to beat the game, though. I never did beat it. The final boss was really hard. And I got stuck because I wasn't... I was, I was like, under, under-leveled and not... I didn't have the right abilities, basically. So needless to say, I'm stuck at the final boss here. Don't think I'll be able to beat it without some leveling and or restarting the game and doing it correctly. But that's fine, whatever. Let's get to the last stack of RPGs we have here, shall we? This video is already long enough. Here we go. Infinite Undiscovery. Oh boy. Probably the most boring of the RPGs I have here on this stack. Um, I actually did not buy this one myself. A friend let me borrow it and he just said I could have it, so here it is. Um, I don't know. I say it was boring, but I played it twice. 
I was going to do all the achievements. This is back when I was a very big achievement whore where I would do all the achievements on like everything, especially RPGs. But this required a third playthrough on the hardest mode. Whoops. On the hardest mode, and I just did not want to do that, and I just I still have yet to f bring myself to do such a thing. <sighs> I don't want to play this game again, especially on the hardest mode. I pretty much had a strategy down where I could wreck everything. It was just a matter of getting the strategy down and being high enough level and all that, but Infinite Undiscovery. It's an okay game. Not bad, but not great. Another RPG, Star Ocean The Last Hope. Now, this is the first Star Ocean game I actually played the whole thing, right? Or did I beat the second one? Or the first one? Which, did I, which one did I play all the way? I think it was the first one, actually. I played Star Ocean 1 and 2 a little bit on my PSP, and I beat one of them. Can't remember. It was I think it was the first one I beat. Anyways, I think that was before I might have played this. Either way, Star Ocean Last Hope, big epic freaking RPG on the Xbox 360. It's actually pretty decent. It get, it does get a you get a little de detached from the characters though because everything takes so long and the fucking cutscenes are like a million years long. If you took out the cutscenes in this game, it's like half as long. That's ridiculous. That's Metal Gear Solid ridiculous. The cutscenes aren't even that good. You're just busy looking at. Freaking anime girl cleavage half, cleavage half the time, and you're just enamored by that. Now, I got no problem with this, but if it takes up half the game, then what was the point? Am I right? Anyway, gameplay is fun, though. I really do like the gameplay, and I really like the character in the game. He reminded me of Mega Man. He's like a green robot guy who, like, slides around and uses his gun. He reminded me of Mega Man. I really liked him. I forget his name. It's been a while since I played this game. Anyway, I was going to do all the achievements on that game, too, because my achievement whoreness, but... Turns out you have to get all the battle trophies in that game, and it's fucking ridiculous. All right, we're almost done here. Four left. First of the four, Resonance of Fate. A very, very different style of JRPG. I really, really enjoyed myself with this one when I first played it. I don't think I would ever go back to it, though, looking back on all the work I had to to get used to the game and get good at it. I just, it, 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 was, a, it was a big learning curve. Once you learn how to play, this game's actually pretty fun. But learning how to play is a very steep learning curve to get good at. It took me a long time, and once I got good at it, it was good. It was good times. The story isn't great though. That, I think that might be what holds it back. The story is not great. It's okay, but it's not great. It's like a big government. Pro, you know, people they're basically the government's fucked up, and these guys are going against it. Kind of. Uh, that's kind of basic, very basic description, but it's kind of that kind of story. Anyway, the gun. The, the, I described the battle system, but just look it up. It's very interesting because you're like running across the map with a gun and shooting at the enemy while you're running in real time and then jumping around and shit. It's like craziness. It's craziness. But anyway, good times. I, I, I liked it. I'm glad, I, I'm glad I played this one. And yes, I did get a, a thousand out of a thousand. That's all the achievements on the game. So there you go. Next one. Eternal Sonata. Here's another JRPG that's very interesting. This one I actually did not buy myself. This one I borrowed from a friend, and uh, eventually he got rid of his Xbox 360, and he said, hey, you can have this game. I said, dude, you're the man. So Xbox 360, Eternal Sonata, another interesting JRPG. Uh, it kind of has a, a similar battle system. So, I shouldn't say similar, but it's like... It's got the kind of battle system where you're where it's like AoE, kind of like action-y, like uh, Star Ocean does. Except for that it... Um, that it... Uh, you kind of like have a time limit for each person's attack. So it's almost like a turn-based, also action-y. It's like on their turn, you have a time limit to do as much as you can or whatever uh, in their little time, like on their turn. And then it switches to the next person's turn. It's kind of a weird battle system, but I actually really liked it. And the uh, the theme of the game, the reason why it's called Eternal Sonata, is everything has musical theme. So everything in the game is named after musical, classical music stuff and stuff like that. So it's kind of a cool little game. I like it. I actually really enjoyed myself with this one, and I'm... I'd play it again. I was actually going to buy it on PS3 until my friend gave me it, so there you go. All right. Got two games left. Let's do it. Boom. Tales of Vesperia, my favorite Xbox 360 game. Well, except for maybe Halo 3, I know I said. My favorite RPG on Xbox 360, I'm pretty sure. I I really, really love this game. I, I loved Tales of Symphonia, and, and then I played this, and I... Phew, these games are both so... This and Tales of Symphonia are just so good freaking love this game you know what the weird thing is about tales is i've played the symphony and vesperia and i've only played a couple other tales games since then and there's so many tales games graces and zillia and fucking zestiria's coming out and i think it might already be out i don't even know but i still yet to really play any other ones tells the abyss tells the legendia those ones 
I've yet to play any of those. But I loved Vesperia and Symphonia so much. I don't understand why I haven't played the more Tales games. It just, I just can't understand what's wrong with me. Because this game, Yuri Lowell, that, that's the purple held motherfucker right there, is amazing. He's such a badass. He's the badass. He's way more badass than Lloyd from Symphonia. Way more badass. Yeah. I, I, I don't even know what else to say about it, dude. I, this is, a, this is my, one of my highest recommendations for people who haven't played uh, any Tales games. This or Symphonia, very highly recommended. Very, very good. Action RPG style. The battle system is great. Um, if anything, it's a little bit better because you can move around in three dimensions a lot easier than in Symphonia. That's that's part of what I like this game so much. But anyway, we got one last game to go, guys. And it's probably what a lot of people consider the best RPG on the 360. And it is really great. It's just not my favorite one. But it's still really awesome. Lost Odyssey. Now, this one is in the same vein as Eternal Sonata. My friend, I put, borrowed it from him to play it originally, and then when he got rid of it, uh, his, three, his 360, he gave me Eternal Sonata and Lost Odyssey. So these these two, I credit to him for me owning them, but fuck yeah, dude. Lost Odyssey is amazing. I need to go back and play this again because it was really, really good, and I, I just don't remember it super well because it's been a long time since I played it now. But I would highly recommend it. It's not an easy game to find these days. I kind of wish they had put it on the Xbox 3. 60 or Xbox One whatever store you can play old games on or whatever. I don't even know if that's how they do it. I know they do the backwards compatibility thing on Xbox One, but I don't know about this shit. Either way, this game's awesome. And uh, <laughs> even somebody told me, you should play the real Final Fantasy 13, Lost Odyssey, which is pretty funny because it is a very, very akin style to Final Fantasy. And that's a pretty good spot on... Uh, example of this this could have been a final fantasy game like that's how the style is and it's really well done turn-based battle system with a little bit of the action sequence thrown in kind of like a paper mario action thing you know action command when you do your attack very similar um legend of dragoon almost um but yeah great great game great story great most most everything about this game is pretty great i'd say the only down thing about it in my opinion is the world map's not really that good but it's not bad it's just you don't really go to the world map much in the game, and when you do late game, you're kind of like, huh, there is a world map. That's cool. Who cares? <laughs> all right, anyway, that's going to do it, guys. That's my Xbox 360 collection. What'd you think? Did I have all the good ones? Did I have the best ones? Am I missing anything good? Are you jealous at all? Let me know in the comments below. Give it a thumbs up if you fucking hate me or love me. Yeah, that's right. I said thumbs up either way. Um, Yeah, that's probably... I know I keep saying this one's bigger, this one's bigger, but this is actually my biggest collection, I think. It's only rivaled by maybe my NES collection. Maybe. Maybe. But anyway, that's going to do it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and um, see you guys next time on another collection video. Peace out, bitches.